Maddie, a reporter for Norfolk newspaper, embarks on a tiger cruise around Christmas time. There, she meets a naval officer and stumbles upon a mystery on the ship. We see Maddie with her colleague, Sarah, who suggests getting a drink later on in the evening. Maddie tells her that she can't come because her sister had invited her to a Navy ball. Her husband had something else he needed to do, so Maddie would be her plus one. They walk into the office, and a colleague that Maddie has been on a couple of dates with greets them. He tells her that a cinema is running a movie Maddie loves, so he wants to take her out on a date. After he leaves, Sarah asks Maddie about him, but Maddie reassures her that it's nothing serious. She says that it's easy to talk to him and they get along. Sarah retorts that the reason they get along is because they only talk about the news. Maddie's boss comes over to her desk and tells her that he has gotten a tip from the DO office about a scandal involving the president. He asks her to write an article about it. Maddie confirms that she will get on it right away, but doesn't seem like she wants to do it. Sarah asks her what the problem is, and she confesses to her that she wants to write more positive news. Reminding people of the harsh reality every day is exhausting for her. Sarah laughs and says that someone's got to do it, and she couldn't think of anyone better for it than Maddie. The night of the ball comes, and we see Maddie walk in with her sister, Amelia. Maddie feels a bit uncomfortable with everyone being so stiff around her, but Amelia reassures her that even sailors can be fun. She tells Maddie that she will get the table, so Maddie goes for the drinks. She gets red wine, but the minute she turns around, she spills it on a woman wearing a white dress. The lady's date takes Maddie's glasses off and sets them aside. Maddie starts apologizing, but the woman assures her that it is fine. She takes Maddie's shawl and goes to clean herself up in the bathroom. Maddie is left alone with the man, and he jokes that she should tell her date to bring her a drink next time. Despite not having a date, Maddie agrees and doesn't mention anything about it. The man's colleague greets him and jokingly calls him the Grinch. Maddie laughs and asks him if he's not a fan of Christmas. The man tells her that Christmas is overrated and leaves to find his date. Maddie goes to find her sister and sees her with Captain Chet Jenkins. She greets him and he can't believe how much she has grown up. She mentions that she hasn't seen him since their dad's funeral. Amelia chimes in and says that the captain had given a beautiful speech. Chet tells them that their father would have been proud of the work they're doing. He asks Maddie why she hasn't signed up for the Tiger Cruise, and she tells him that she has a lot of work to do. He promises that he will get her a cabin if she changes her mind, before he leaves to greet the other guests. Amelia asks Maddie about the drinks, right as the lady with the wine stain comes into the salon. Amelia notices Maddie's shawl on her and asks her about it. Maddie tells her about the accident, and Amelia suggests avoiding red wine for the evening. Later on in the night, Amelia gets a phone call and leaves Maddie by herself at the table. Maddie starts yawning, and the man she just met earlier comes to her table and asks if she's bored, handing her the shawl. Maddie asks about his date, and he says that she's okay. His date appears out of nowhere and tells the man that someone's asking for them, so they leave. The captain gets everyone's attention as he proposes a toast. He thanks everyone for coming, especially the loved ones of the sailors for their sacrifice and strength. The next morning, the sisters go to their favorite restaurant to have breakfast. The waitress, Sharon, greets them and sits them at their favorite table. They order their usual, and Maddie tells Amelia that she is very lucky. She's lucky that she has the job she wants. Amelia tells her that she could say the same for her. Maddie admits that she loves writing, but it isn't the same as it used to be. She asks her sister whether she remembers an article she had written in high school. The article about a baby being dropped off at the fire station. Amelia nods her head, and Maddie informs her that the kid is a straight-a student, and she participates in a lot of school activities. It is impressive how a firefighter saved the girl's life. Maddie loves those types of stories, and that's what she actually wants to write, rather than the ones she already writes. Amelia asks her if she had fun at the ball, and whether anyone caught her eye there. Maddie tells her that she doesn't want to go through the same things their mother did, and that a military husband isn't her cup of tea. She gets a text from her boss, and Amelia notices how distracted her sister is. She asks her to go on the cruise again, and, after some consideration, Maddie finally gives in. She goes to work and heads to her boss's office once she's there. She tells him that she wants to go on a cruise, and he assumes that it's work-related. She explains the whole thing to him and tells him that it's really important to her family. Her boss finally agrees and says that he will give the story to another colleague. Maddie thanks him and goes back to her desk. Sarah asks her why she's so happy, and Maddie tells her that she is going on a vacation. She goes home to pack, and while she's packing, she notices a picture of her father on her nightstand. She looks at the picture and reminds herself why she's going on the cruise. Maddie and her mom arrive at the ship, and Amelia greets them. The captain comes shortly and tells them he is glad the whole family has come. He calls his son, Billy Jenkins, over and praises him, saying to them that he is one of the best pilots. Maddie realizes that Billy is the man from the ball and tries to hide her face. Billy greets everyone and tells Maddie that he didn't know that Amelia was her sister. Captain chimes in and invites everyone to dinner that night. The sisters and their mom agree and go to their rooms to unpack. Amelia takes her family to see her aircraft. She has daddy's girl written on it. Her family loves it. 
Amelia says that she is lucky she got that nickname, because she didn't choose it, the other pilots did. Maddie turns around and sees Billy's aircraft, it has the word Grinch on it. Billy walks to his aircraft and greets the family, before telling them that he will see them at dinner. Dinner time comes, and we see the whole family together. Maddie appreciates the decorations, and Captain Chet tells her that the senior chief is in charge of all things Christmas. Billy walks in with his date and says that decorations are unnecessary, because the ship is for combat. Chet laughs and tells everyone that's the reason they call Billy the Grinch. Billy introduces Charlotte to everyone, and she shares that she is a romance writer. She travels the world and discovers different love stories to write about. Captain Chet reveals that he met his wife on a tiger cruise trip. He calls it a unique love story, but Billy says that it's one without a happy ending. As the night goes on, the stories continue. Chet tells the sisters interesting stories about their father and all the presents he used to buy them. A pilot named Don comes in and apologizes for being late. Chet introduces him to everyone and reveals that Charlotte is Don's sister. Maddie gets confused and asks Billy and Charlotte whether they're together. Charlotte says that they're not and she considers him more of a brother. Don and Charlotte leave as they have to call their mom. Amelia has to work the night shift and her mother wants to watch. Amelia asks Maddie if she wants to join but she says that she will go to bed because she's tired. Everyone leaves and Chet suggests that Billy should walk Maddie to her room. Billy agrees, and they go out. On their way there, Billy tells Maddie that he can't believe that she had thought Charlotte was his girlfriend. He confesses that his father is pressuring him into marrying someone, or else he will be alone forever. Maddie says that her sister wants her to marry a military man, but that will never happen. Maddie doesn't want that life. Maddie thinks that it's amazing that his father met his mother on a cruise trip, and asks whether that happens often. Billy says that he had come on the ship to do his job and serve the country, not to find love. She asks him about what he said at the dinner, and he shrugs it off saying that it isn't anything important. They get to her room, and Maddie thanks him for helping her. Maddie emails Sarah that she has an amazing story idea. Sarah writes back, and says that she wants to hear everything about it. Maddie goes to Chet the next morning, and asks him about his love story. He tells her that he had divorced his wife a couple of years ago, but he understands that a military life is difficult to handle. He does admit that some couples figure it out. Maddie asks him if he knows someone she can interview. He says that he will ask around, but she can go to the archives room to find out more about the history of the ship. Maddie says that she would love to get a look. Chet tells her that he will get Billy to help her out. They go to Billy, and Chet asks him. Billy declines, because he is too busy with work. Chet demands that he clears out his schedule, and helps Maddie out. Billy has no other choice. Maddie and Billy go to the archive, and check out the old boxes. Maddie opens a box, and sees different photographs of the events that took place on the ship. She is fascinated by them, and Billy asks her why she hasn't been on the cruise before. She says that she didn't want to miss out on her usual Christmas celebrations, because she thinks Christmas is the best holiday ever. Maddie pulls out an old journal from 1965. It used to belong to someone named Sam, who used to be a pilot. She reads the journal, and it says that the pilot had returned from Vietnam just in time for the Tiger Cruise. He is happy because he can bring his family with him, and share with them what he does for the country. He writes about a woman he had seen on the ship before, and calls her the most beautiful woman ever. He had helped her with her bags, and she told him her name, which was Dorothy. Maddie asks if she can borrow the journal, and Billy tells her she can take anything she wants. Billy pulls out an old box, and when he opens it, he discovers a Santa suit. Maddie suggests that he should dress up as Santa, but Billy refuses. He says that he knows that his father is trying to make him like Christmas, by making him help Maddie, but it won't work. Maddie calls her boss, Bailey, and suggests a story on love and war. She says that a lot of soldiers had come to the ship, and found their soulmate here. She says that she can find a love story for the ages, that can make it in the Christmas edition paper. Bailey says he isn't sure about it, as romance isn't her lane. Maddie asks him whether he can look into something for her. Bailey tells her that he will look at it, but only if she finds something interesting. Maddie and her mom go to watch Amelia as she flies her aircraft. Amelia fires her engine, and Maddie and her mom can't help but squeal in excitement. Maddie goes to the library to read the rest of Sam's diary. He writes about the things he found out about her through their conversations. She was a dance teacher, living in New York. Her brother had told Sam that Dorothy had a man back home. Sam hopes that it isn't serious, because he has felt something for Dorothy that he has never felt before. She has given him hope, after not having any for such a long time. Maddie gets lost in the story, and Billy shakes her up by coming to the library. He asks her for an update on the story, and she recounts what she had read. Billy gives her an ornament, and Maddie realizes that the ornament had been a gift for Dorothy, from Sam. Maddie tells Billy that the senior chief could help them find their names, so they head there. Billy hands the ornament to the senior chief, and Maddie asks him if he can find out who Dorothy is. He says that he doesn't know who Dorothy is, but his brother can help him. He can get access to some private information about the guests on the cruise ship. 
Maddie hands him the drawing she found, and he says that they should check the memorabilia for some photographs. Billy and Maddie get there and see a picture of a dancer. Maddie compares the drawing to the photo, and they spot a lot of similarities. Billy tells her that there is a historical building for the Navy in New York, so Maddie suggests they go there the next day. The next day comes, and the ship arrives in New York. Amelia and her mother go to eat some pizza, so Billy and Maddie head to the museum. Maddie asks about the performances that used to take place on the ship, and specifically asks for a girl named Dorothy. The lady working there finds out that her surname was Mill. She has worked as a dance instructor in a dance studio in the city. Maddie gets excited because they can visit the studio, so they go there. They arrive at the studio and walk up to the instructor. They ask her about Dorothy, and she tells them that she used to be her teacher. Maddie asks her for some information, and the lady tells them that the pilot had come to find her, but Dorothy had a boyfriend at the time. She says that she isn't sure who she ended up with. The lady tells them that Dorothy had moved to California after some time, but apologizes for not knowing anything else. Billy and Maddie continue their adventure as they walk the snowy streets of New York. Maddie suggests getting a snack, so they get some roasted chestnuts. Billy says that he has never had them before, and he expected them to be a lot sweeter than that. Maddie jokes and says that she thought the same about him. She asks him whether he's been to New York before, and he says that his parents have taken him there before their divorce. A man hands Maddie a poster about a Christmas show at the New York Model Train Museum. Billy says that his parents had taken him there when he was a kid, so Maddie suggests they go there. Billy isn't sure at first, but ends up agreeing. They stand in front of the little train toy model, and Billy says that it brings back memories. Maddie asks him if he's okay, and Billy admits that the divorce has changed him. Trains are the only thing he and his father talked about, and they never went any deeper than that. Maddie says that it was the opposite with her mother, and all she wanted to do was talk. She confesses that she didn't want to, because her father's death was too painful for her. She regrets not going to all the cruises and events her father had invited her to, and even wishes she hadn't been a Navy brat. Billy tells her not to beat herself up about it. He understands that the Navy life is hard. He tells the story of when his father bought him a red train, and says that he had played with it everywhere, until the wheels had fallen off. He admits that he had lost it, but that train is still one of the best memories from his childhood. Before they continue their tour, Maddie goes to grab some hot chocolate for the both of them. A child plays around with the plane toy and pretends that he is a pilot. Billy overhears him and pretends that he is on the call with him. The kid smiles and his father admits that he had brought him for the trains, but he is obsessed with flying. Maddie joins the conversation and tells them that Billy is a fighter pilot in the Navy. The kid gets excited when Billy hands him a small badge of an airplane. Maddie admits that Billy is good with the kids, but what's even more shocking to her is that Billy has said Merry Christmas to someone. Maddie suggests they go eat something, because she knows just the place that will change his view on Christmas. They have a milkshake at the restaurant, and order two burgers. Maddie admits that she feels carefree, and it isn't often that she does feel like that. Billy tells her that he always feels like that when he's flying, but the landing is what stresses him out. He insists that he isn't scared of anything, but Maddie thinks that he's scared of Christmas. She assumes that his parents had split before Christmas, and Billy admits that his Christmases haven't been the same since. Billy thanks Maddie for an amazing day, and confesses that he hasn't had a good time in a while. She receives a text from her mother, asking her why they aren't at the ship. They leave the restaurant in a hurry, and catch a taxi. They get stuck in traffic, and Billy suggests they run, as he gets out of the taxi. They run for 15 blocks, and make it just in time before the ship leaves. They catch their breath once they're in, and Billy thanks Maddie for the amazing time they spent together. Maddie calls Sarah the next morning, and asks her to find some more information about the love story. Sarah tells her that Dorothy had moved to San Diego in 1966, but she can't find any information after that. Maddie thanks her and asks for the call to be transferred to Bailey. He asks her about the story and she tells him all about it, but admits that she can't find out how it ended. He tells her that he needs the story, as his previous one got dropped. Maddie is in shock, but promises to finish the story just in time for Christmas. Maddie goes to the senior chief and asks him if he found any information on Sam. He tells her that they have to file a freedom of information request from the military to get the information. Maddie tells him that she doesn't have time to wait that long, but thanks him before she leaves. The family has dinner with the captain on the last night of the cruise. He asks Maddie about the story. She admits that she has been facing some difficulties, but Billy has been a great help. Captain Chet is surprised by that, and Billy says that it has been enlightening. The captain thanks everyone for joining the cruise, and Billy excuses himself because he has to work something out. He leaves, and Captain Chet raises a toast for Christmas. They go to the workshop to make some Christmas ornaments, as it is a tradition. Everyone gets surprised when they see a Santa on the ship, but soon realize that Billy had put on a costume. The captain tells Maddie that she is a miracle worker, and asks what happened on their trip to New York. Maddie smiles and says that they have talked about the past and the future, and she made sure to remind him what Christmas is for. After taking pictures with the kids, Billy puts on his uniform and sits down to make an ornament. He tells Maddie that he could be spontaneous, and she admits that she had been wrong about him. 
Billy makes a snowflake with lots of glitter on it, before they head out to watch the real snow. They stand in the snow, and Maddie calls it the perfect night. Billy agrees, as he leans in and kisses her. Maddie pulls away after they kiss, and says that it isn't a good idea. She thinks he's great, but she can't live the military life. The next morning comes, and everyone is ready to leave. The captain tells Maddie that he wants to see the article in the papers by Christmas, and she says she'll work on it. Senior Chief comes running to Maddie, and tells her that he had found more information. The name of the man is Sam William, and he had gone back to Vietnam in 1967. There isn't any other information about him after that, because no remains of him were found after the fire. Billy joins the conversation, and listens carefully. The senior chief leaves, and Maddie thanks Billy before tightly hugging him. He thanks her as well, and they say their goodbyes to each other. Billy and his father are seen enjoying an evening at home. Chet asks him about his day in New York, and Billy tells him about the art museum, and admits that it had brought a lot of good and bad memories back. He tells his father that they haven't talked about his leaving, and he wants to understand why he did it. Chet apologizes, and says that he regrets it every day, but it seemed easier for him to do as such. He admits that he has failed everyone in one way or another, but he wants Billy to know how much he misses him. He wanted Billy to work with him, just to be close to him. Although he is proud of his career, Billy is the most important thing for him. Maddie seems to be facing difficulties at work, as she's stuck on the love story. Her boss comes, and tells her that he needs the story by the end of the day, or he will have to change it. Maddie is very frustrated about her writer's block, so Sarah takes her out for some hot chocolate to ease her mind. Sarah asks her about the trip, and Maddie tells her about Billy. She admits that she likes him a lot, so Sarah asks her to imagine their wedding. All the handsome pilots and sailors in their uniforms. Maddie stops for a second as an idea comes to her mind. If Sam and Dorothy had married each other, there would be a wedding announcement about them. They rush back to the office, but are met with Billy, waiting in the lobby for Maddie. They take a walk, and Billy hands her the blue snowflake he had made for her. He admits that he didn't want to say goodbye to her, because it felt wrong. He had fallen in love with her, and he knows how she feels about the Navy life, so he asks her to go out with him just this once. Maddie believes that it will get too complicated, and it won't end well. Billy looks at her and admits that he is scared to fall in love, but he wants to take the chance. He leans in closer, but Maddie gets up and says that she can't do it. He makes her doubt her decision for a bit, but she runs with the excuse that she has to go back to work. Maddie finds a wedding picture of the couple, and finds out that they got married on Christmas Day. She sees an address, and decides to call the landlord of the building. He tells her that the couple had moved out a couple of years ago, and can't give her information unless she's a family member. Maddie looks closer at a photo of them, and sees the couple posing in front of a diner she had been going to since she was a little girl. The diner, Picasso's. She rushes to the diner, and sees Sharon. She asks her about Sam, and Sharon tells her that he used to be the diner's owner, but he sold it 25 years ago. Sharon says that she doesn't know where he is, but he has a daughter that lives in Virginia Beach by the name of Lily. Maddie calls Lily later on in the night, and they settle on meeting the next day. Maddie gets excited, and tells her family about it, and they all celebrate. The next morning comes, and Maddie goes to meet Lily. She sees the old couple, and a weight lifts off her shoulders. She sits down, and asks them whether she can record it, and they agree. Maddie asks Sam how he found Dorothy after the Tiger Cruise, and he says that her brother had told him where the studio is, so he drove seven hours to find her. Dorothy says that she felt something special about Sam, so she ended the relationship with her boyfriend at the time. After a couple of dates, she knew that he was the one for her. They got engaged shortly after, and were going to wait to get married until he finished his service, but he got drafted to Vietnam. Dorothy had agreed to wait for him, but didn't know that it would take so long. Sam says that his plane had crashed, and he had to work there until the war was over. Dorothy says that she thought he had died after the war, but when they told her that he was alive, she fell to her knees. She calls it the greatest thing that has ever happened to her. Maddie asks how she had the strength to wait for him, and Dorothy says that she had prayed every day for her love. Maddie asks Sam how he opened the diner, and he says that he had a passion for sketching when he was younger, but there was no money from it at the time, so he opened a diner. Maddie asks Dorothy how she had been okay with living the Navy life. Dorothy smiles, and says that it has been the easiest decision of her life. Although it is uncertain, she knew that she had her Samuel. Maddie says she has brought something for them, as she hands them the star Sam had made for Dorothy. Sam can't believe it, and asks Maddie to thank the pilot that had found it. Maddie is finally finished with the article, and sends it to Bailey. Christmas Day comes, and Maddie and her family gather together. Amelia asks her about the article, and she says that it has turned out amazing. After the dinner is over, Maddie's mom asks her about Billy. She tells her that he had come to see her at work, and her mother suggests that she should go out with him. Maddie asks her mother if she had ever worried about her future with her father, and she says that she liked him, and pretty soon married him. Her mother confesses something that she hadn't heard before now. She had broken off the engagement because of her fear of the Navy life. She knew that he was the one, so she flew to surprise him, and he proposed to her for the second time. She admits that it was hard, but knowing that she has something special is what kept her going. 
Maddie says that he died because of his job, and her mother corrects her and says that he died doing what he loves. Maddie rings Chet's phone and asks for Billy. Chet looks at him, but he motions to him to not give him the phone. Chet tells Maddie that he isn't available, so she tells him to ask Billy to read the newspaper. She will be waiting for him at 10 o'clock at the diner the next morning. Christmas morning arrives, and the newspaper is delivered to everybody. Maddie walks into the house with the newspaper herself, and everyone is so excited to read it. Chet reads the morning paper as well, and hands it to Billy, so he sits down and reads it. In the article, Maddie admits that she had disliked the Navy because it took her father away from her. Being on the cruise ship, and discovering the couple's love story, has made her change the way she views family and the military. Maddie's mother congratulates her, and says that she is proud of her. Maddie smiles, but gets interrupted by a phone call. It's her boss, and he congratulates her as well. Maddie tells him that she has been thinking about her career, and she wants to work on military news more. Billy tells her that they will talk after the holidays, and that they should be able to arrange it. Billy finishes the paper and goes to his father. Chet asks him about his love story and encourages him to go get her. Maddie has her morning coffee on the patio of the diner with her family, but can't help but worry whether Billy's going to show up or not. Right as they're about to leave, Billy appears. He says that he knew that there was something special ever since he laid his eyes on her at the ball. Maddie laughs about the wine accident and tells him that she hasn't met anyone like him before. She calls him spontaneous, serious but fun, and handsome. He smiles and she tells him that she has something for him. She hands him a small red train, similar to the one he had as a child. He thanks her and admits that he feels like a child again. He says that he has something for her as well, and pulls out the glittery snowflake he had made at the workshop on the boat. Sharon puts some music on in the diner, and after hearing it, Billy asks Maddie for a dance. Maddie smiles and wraps her arms around him. They wish each other Merry Christmas, before sharing a sweet kiss.